The design you see here is nearing completion. Most of these species symbols have been placed and they've been assigned to different plant names. There's a, a lawn in here and ringed, the lawn is ringed by um, Agapanthus, Agapanthus prycox, and there are other species in here. There's a Dodonia through here and here a jacaranda. So let's go to GCAD Plus and we will assign them using this table but we could also show symbols with names, all the ones that have been assigned and that's a very quick way of making sure all of the symbols have been assigned so that a plant schedule similar to the one on the right can in fact be generated easily and give you the correct numbers of individual species that are used to develop the design. But there are occasions where, for example, through this area here and under story planting, where ground covers are going to be plants planted. And in that particular instance, there are 85 um, specimens of uh, a species, and the abbreviation is there, MP, Myoporum parvifolium, and we can we use the same plant database that's associated with the file and if I edit it here we're using we can use this very same plant list or plant database and use a different tool to calculate the number of ground cover species that are going to be used in an area that's loosely defined in this case by a polyline so I've selected in fact I've drawn a polyline through that area and uh, our user wants to know how to use the ground cover tool to calculate and stamp that number in. Well it's again in the GCAD Plus drop down menu go to ground cover and this tool is make the ground cover calculation and we're asked to select a boundary line which is that um, polyline and it's been uh, had curve fitting applied but that's not necessary and we're working here in the metric environment so I set my tab to millimeter anyone working in the imperial area you would use feet as your base unit so we need to select a plant that we're going to use so let's click plant list and we could sort on type and whatever but I want to use one called Dichondra repens, the native violet, and I'll say OK. And we can type an abbreviation. I've used down here my MP for Myoporum parvifolium, so Dichondra repens uh, I'll use as DR. The plant spacing, we would normally plant these, they spread obviously as a ground cover, maybe at about 750 millimetre, three quarters of a metre. And you'll notice here I've got a number one inside of a, uh, a circle to indicate to the team uh, the area we are referring to. So I'll put a two in there and uh, we click OK. The next prompt says input the first line of the leader. So we want to, in the same way we want a leader running in here. Uh, and we'll, the second point and what height do we want the text to be? let's leave it at 300 and insert point for the number block so you can see that the the tool the routine has drawn it's calculated the number of individual tube species of dichondra repens to go in the area and we now want to put one of these blocks with a number in it so here's our insert point and input height we want it about so high and there we are. So we're indicating zone 2 and we've got zone 1 indicated. So just as you can draw a plant schedule, we can now draw a ground cover schedule. You might want to change the spacing between those two, but we'll leave that for the moment. So we now say GCAD plus ground cover and we draw the ground cover schedule. 
that's the change in all areas in the drawing that's had this tool applied to it. Input our first point and our second point and the little schedule should be drawn. And if we come in here, there we are. There's our botanical name and common name directly under it and the total uh, number of plants needed. So it's another ground, it's another schedule distinctly different from the schedule that you see over here which is the plant schedule itself with let's zoom in on that and you can see that one has plant botanical name and common name I've actually made the color of that quite light so I can dive in there and edit that block and wrap a box around there and just put that back from 252 we'll make that cover by layer and then close the block editor and now we can see printing much more clearly so we can right click and uh, zoom extents now so we've generated a little plant schedule uh, sorry a ground cover schedule here and a plant schedule there don't forget that in a layout space we can form a floating viewport to look at this little area I mean, we don't need to have it sitting there. We can pop it down here. So it's easy to create a new floating viewport and look at the main schedule and this schedule. And here's a legend over here. So we could lay the layout out looking at various parts of our design. You've also got a tool on ground cover to show the tagged areas. And you can see there's the area that we just worked through and it's currently tagged its color is by layer we might want to just make that white on a white background sorry color not color by layer but you might want to make that color 255 and it then disappears of course so in that zone if the native violet undercover running right through there and in this case in that zone myoporum parvifolium so if you do that same trick again and underground cover show the tagged areas can you see it still finds the floating sorry not the floating viewpoint it still finds the curve fitted polyline quite well so I hope that's just a little overview of a, a companion tool if you like to the plant schedule tool one that enables you to handle um, massive amounts of planting of ground cover and gives you a, an accurate count well I made mention of the fact that you can present various parts of the design in floating viewports but let's go to a layout view to demonstrate that and I'll zoom a window around the entire sheet this is an A3 sheet so I've set up a floating viewport here on the right hand side and let's double click in there and what that does is takes a snapshot or look into model space and then takes that view and place it in the floating viewport so I can display that on the layout and then double click to get rid of the selection the complete design is sits in this particular floating viewport and the approach is the same double click it and you can see here that the floating viewport sits over the main design and if we look and if we come back again and display it on the layout and then pick that floating viewport and look over here in the properties box you can see it has a fixed scale of 100 so I've ticked that yes box and set the scale to 100 let's again unselect all so the main design sits at the top in its own floating viewport the legend and the, the plant schedule itself and the new ground cover schedule that we just generated with myoporum parvifolium and diconda repens in it sits there and then I've selected from our SPP DB 
companion database to GCAD Plus, a series of images, and I've put those across the bottom. The native violet there, the Correa pulchella, and Dodonia viscosa. So we're, we're demonstrating to the client some of the species that are going to be used in the design, in the design rather. I've put a rectangle around the group of floating viewports and I've added the logo at the bottom right. So we're ready now to print that design. You might at this stage want to put line weights on and that will make the line weight just a little heavier uh, when we go to print. And you have an opportunity to print either to a installed PDF writer like Qt PDF or you can do a quick PDF just by going file I'll get rid of that email coming in you can just go file and save as PDF we could just put a window at say maximum amount of detail and we just put a box careful box around and just the outside that rectangle that I've added there and we can put it on the desktop and we'll just call it test And save it so we're going to have a look at a quick PDF version of the design that we might well send to the client attached to an email and here we are we're in a viewer I think this time it's viewing it in um, in my the viewer that's in my browser but we need to shrink the design just a little I want, to, I want to see the maximum fit to the width so that's what I've done so there's a quick PDF version I really want to step out a bit so I can see the whole bit but that's not working the way I want it to work and what I'd now be inclined to do we have that on the desktop I'd now swing and make sure that I can open that in Adobe PDF Reader. Well, I've now gone to the desktop and clicked on the file, right click and made sure it opens with Adobe Acrobat Reader. And here it is. And I find it a lot easier to manage here. Click the minus sign, click the plus sign or zoom in with a right click and zoom a marquee zoom so I can look at whatever I want and zoom in like so so I'm relatively not relative I'm very happy with that as a result of that exercise